before my learned senior starts, there is a small request so regarding the scope of the reference. So you are, as your lordships Lord, have now broadly Lord, seen the papers, Lord, the reference is whether Article 30, sub Article 1, the expression used, establish and administer, is disjunctive or otherwise. Where Lord, uh, Aziz Pasha will have to be Lord, addressed. But the written submissions which all of us have received from the petitioner is as if Aziz Pasha is being reconsidered as if uh, this bench is sitting as an appellate bench. My Lord, uh, I have, my Lord, in my written submissions, my Lord, narrated the, only a minute, if I get the capacity up. of the solicitor to interrupt and take the stage is legendary. Let us begin and he will answer and we will answer him. This is not on, my Lord. This is simply not on. We, if he has raised certain uh, questions, we will answer them. Uh, let Dr. Dhawan open because once in, in about 20 minutes, we know what the ambit of his submissions is going to be. Then we will see uh, as the matter progresses. Let, Mr. Dhawan, let Dr. Dhawan open. Let Dr. Dhawan open. My let request, begin, this is our request and I, we, would, we have decided to be not decent and we will be decent. Both individually on the issues, quite apart from being disjunctive or conjunctive, that's one part of it. But on the individual issues under Article 30, whether Aligarh Muslim University was administered or let's read and as or, or established on both those issues, the court ruled to say that it is neither administered by minorities or established by minorities. That correctness of the finding has never been referred. Has ever been referred. That be, That's all that we wanted to point out. That will be your submission. That will be your submission in this Lord, yes, we'll yes, that, yes, That's all. Lord, whether this reference is sustainable is an argument I'm going to make. But in fact, the because one goes the premise that the what is this? Order, Lord, uh, I've never seen Mr. this in the Mr. Supreme Guru, Court. Mr. Guru. Uh, we are now a bench of seven. We are bench. We are a bench of seven. Let Dr. Dhawan open his argument. We'll, as as the matter progresses, we'll we'll understand what is the scope of the controversy, and then but we will this, decide. This where... is simply unfair. Yes, Dr. Dhawan. In, in fact, it is fair. We know no, no, that. Please, uh, what is the please? Scope? One person goes you on air, Vacha, The other person says the reference is not maintainable. We will address this issue. You won't be able to. You answer. Hmm. You answer, and we will answer you. My only request, my lord, is this. Yes. There is a certain slack we might require in your lordship's timing. We appreciate, my lord, that this is the busiest court in the world. You are overwhelmed in a way in which no court in the world is overwhelmed, whether it's 136 or whatever it is. The time that your lordship can give, my lord, is very important. And I would just say that in the light of what has been said, our reply is important. In in, uh, the, in the 370 case, our reply was curtailed. If required, your lordship may give us time. That's my respectful submission. My lord, I remember G, G. L. Sanghi was asked to curtail his arguments. Krishna, I rang you about in the evening and said, your item is number one, please continue. These are my lord, traditions and I know that the Chief Justice and I've commended it, is so patient in listening to arguments, it, it is admirable. <laughs> Seven, we'll thank you. Don't, don't worry about the fact, ultimately our conscience has to be satisfied that we have heard both sides fully. That's right, and our reply. And the, reason why, the reason why we set down time limits is because then people have a broad indication. No, I understand. There's no I repetition by for time limit. Lord, yes. Your lordships are overwhelmed. Now, Lord, let me begin by saying about the reference. I want to read the two reference mm -hmm. orders to your lordships because the significant thing in the two reference orders is this that normally when a reference is made, the points of reference are itemized by your lordships. This has not been done in this case. So I've taken the liberty, my lord, in my written submission of itemizing what draws from the two reference orders, the first in 81 and the second in 2019. So let me take your Lordship straight away to those two particular orders, because it's important your Lordship should itemize what the point of reference is. We get them in volume 3A, right? 3A, absolutely. I'm sorry, I'm a Luddite, my Lord, I'll have to use the printed text. 
So much better. <laughs> One day, my Lord, I will learn. That's a promise. <laughs> my Lord, kindly turn to... I thought we could have started with this matter. <laughs> it should start with this matter. I'm learning, my Lord, I'm learning. <laughs> Hello. I am. I appreciate this, my Lord. And when I interact with my colleagues, they're brilliant at this. In a way in which we never were. Anyway, my Lord, this was what... did said by a bench presided over by Justice Fazal Ali. It says, after hearing the parties, we are clearly of this opinion that this case involves two substantial questions regarding the interpretation of institution changes in view of the broad principles laid down in Aziz Basha. Even as several jurists, including Mr. Sirwai, have expressed the correctness of the decision of this court, since the point has arisen, we think that it is proper with a larger bench can consider the aspects fully. We therefore direct that this case may be play, placed before the Honorable Chief Justice for being heard by a bench of at least seven judges so that Aziz Bhasha may also be considered and the points that arise directly to the essential conditions or ingredients of the binary institution may also be decided once and for all. Then a reference is made to the various criticisms which the court noted. A large number of jurists, including Mr. Sirvai, learned counsel for the petitioner, Mr. Garg, and interveners, Dikshit and Kaskar, have also stated, Mr. Garg, and interveners, Dikshit and Kaskar, have also stated that this case requires, recon, requires reconsideration. In view of the urgency that this matter may be decided as early as possible, we gave liberty to counsel to mention it before the Chief Justice. So here, my Lord, is a clear statement. Of course, that reference was not made eventually. But we have now to consider the reference that was made by my Lord Chief Justice Gogoi. Your Lordship may come to 216. The point I'm going to make is there are so many things mentioned in this reference that your lordships will have to formulate, and we will assist your lordship to formulate, what the points of reference really are. Maybe all these arguments, the reference is bad, etc., can be looked at after the event. Now, my lord, 216 begins with Aziz Bhasha. In our mind, it's clear that the community will have the right to establish an administer of their choice, meaning thereby, where a religious minority establishes an educational institution, it will have the right to administer it. An argument has been raised to the effect that even though the religious minority may not have been established, it will still have the right to administer. When I get to Aziz Bhasha, my Lord, I'll read all of it, but kindly come to page 219, 218. It's a very interesting comment, my Lord, your Lordships have made, which really, in a sense, takes us much further where in paragraph 2, it is said, the judgment of the Allahabad High Court, which is under challenge, rejects the prayers made on account of the decision of Aziz Bhatt. This is the effect of Aziz Bhatt. That after 1968, it has quelled all understandings of Article 30. Then, my Lord, a mention is made of Anjuman Ramania, which is the 1981 case. And then, my Lord, your Lordships will see in paragraph 4, it mentions TMA Pi. What is the effect of TMA Pi? It's crucial, my Lord, in our understanding of what this is. Your Lordships will then come, my Lord, to page 219, where a question was raised in TMA Pi. Now, Yashpal, my Lord, looking at the UGC Act, which is what I refers to, but nevertheless, it does it. UGC Act, my lord. Now, my lord, what do we do with Yashpal? And then, my lord, over the case 221, having regard to the background as stated above, when the precise question was already referred to the seven judgment but not answered, we are of the view that the present question set out above should be referred. Now, what is to be taken into account, my Lord? TMA Pi is to be taken into account. Yashpal is to be taken into account. Yashpal, my Lord, says that when you want to establish a university, it has to be done by statute. This is Section 23 of the UGC Act as well. 
Now, the point would be, it means that wherever there is the establishment by statute, you are not entitled to be a minority institution. This will affect a large number of institutions, my lord, in this country. Your lordship is a chancellor, my lord, of, I want to stress that point because I don't think Aziz Masha has understood how universities are administered. Now, my lord, what do we do with the reference? You can pop up and say whatever you like, but we have tried to make, my lord, some sense out of what this is. I've done it in a small paragraph, and will your lordships come to my written submission? Lord, my learned friend says that in 2.20, Aziz Basha has to be reconsidered as mentioned twice. This is there, my lord, in the reference. But unfortunately, that bench did not delineate what the questions are, which normally, my lord, happens. Now come to my written submission. Of course, that the order, the referring order by Chief Justice Gogoi, Brother Justice Khanna and Justice Nageshwar Rao, refers to the questions which were formulated in Justice Fazal Ali's original order. Says that, well, those questions were never answered. It was TMFI. No. Question formulated two. is TMFI. No, there were two questions which were formulated no. by Justice Fazal Ali. In fact, he began by saying two questions arise. Yes. He didn't formulate as, them as one and two, but they, it's obvious on the first page the, the learned judges formulated the two questions. But the very fact that it refers to 2MA Pai and Yash, Yashpal has to be taken into account, my lord. It's, it's as simple as that, my lord. Now, my lord, finally... questions were formulated by Justice Fazal Ali's referring. To some extent, my lord. To some extent. But this court looked at the later decisions of this court. And the later developments which have That's taken right. place as well. Now, my lord, kindly come to my written submission. This is volume 1A. Because you have the 2004 Act which comes in, then Yashpal that, is there. That's right. And then TMA Pai tells us what, how do you define a minority? It doesn't that's right. tell, TMA Pai doesn't deal with establish and administer, but it certainly has some bearing on uh, on the issue because it does. Of course, and its consequences. Because your lordships are always concerned with the consequences of an yeah. interpretation. Finally, come a lot to my written submission. That would be volume. The 1A. One one. To my mind, my lord, since Yashpal, and of course there's the National Minorities Act, my lord, which is very important. I have, my lord, indicated what the possible reference could be. And that your lordships will find at the bottom of page 8. Yes. Now, my lord, at the bottom of 8, I've succinctly put what the reference should be. Whether the decision in Aziz Bhasha is internally contradictory in its reasoning on facts and law, contrary to the authoritative decisions of this court, rendered nugatory by subsequent statutory changes, and contrary to the constitutional dispensation of Article 30. This covers, my lord, the later portions and the earlier portions. Now here, my lord, I put the issues that arise from this. The first is, was Aziz Bhasha correctly decided and whether it suffers from internal contradiction and reasoning on facts and law? This, my lord, I'll place Aziz Bhasha before your lordships. Was Aziz, did Aziz Bhasha need to be considered in the light of earlier and subsequent decisions of this court? What is the effect of Aziz Bhasha in the future decisions of the Allahabad High Court, uh, where, which applies Aziz Bhasha completely and strikes down the statutory am amendments through the 81 Act. Well, Lord, when we went to the Allahabad High Court, Chief Justice Ray simply said, this problem of Article 30 and Aziz Bhasha is by a bench, authoritative bench. We have to follow it. There's nothing more we can do. Of course, the judgment is piquant, but we are not at present, my Lord, in appeal over the Allahabad judgment. I appreciate that, my Lord. We can certainly place it before your lordship, but I don't think it's necessary. Maybe that's in the light of your lordship's decision. Maybe, my lord, that can be done by the smaller bench. Now, my lord, what is the effect of the National Commission of Institutions Act read with the University Grants Commission? Should Aziz Bhasha be reconsidered in the light of the NCMI and read with UGC by Yashpal. Then, my lord, was Aziz Bhasha in 
correct in accepting the antecedent historical data on AMU's Muslim character, but denying its constitutional significance while de deciding the issue of its minority status, which is at variance with St. Stephen's, Proust, Blot, and Pathe. Then, is Aziz Basha contrary to the constitutional dispensation? Blot, that's the sixth point. These are the issues that arise, and I've dealt with them in Syriac. Because we have to, my lord, whether we like it or not, call a reference from the two reference orders. Now, my lords, I want to begin by saying, before I go into the preliminary objections that we want to raise, my lord, my lord I think your lordship will bear in mind that India has a diversity which is more than continents and any other country in the world. Your lordships have listed in that they have listed only 22 languages in the eight schedule. But in actual fact, there are much more. As you go across even my state of UP, you will see the variation as it goes. And they want to preserve that language. Tulu, my lord, that is the basis of TMA Pais. Therefore, your lordship will bear in mind that this enormous task before your lordships, which TMA Pai squarely places, in talking of secularism, and then there's this very elegant, elegant passage, my lord, at the end. Very evocative, my lord, but very important. So when your lordship gets into this question, my lord, your lordship is deciding something that goes to the heart of Indian secularism and to the heart of the diversity of this country, both in terms of language as well as religion. This is so crucial to our understanding of the Constitution. Of course, in 1920, there was no Constitution. But subsequent developments have taken place. In 1950, a Constitution comes. 56, the UGC Act comes. The Minority Act comes. And there's a load of decisions, Lord, which say, look at the historical antecedency. 